Good morning all. Today we are going to discuss the topic endodontic irrigants. Coming to the contents, it includes the introduction, definition of endodontic irrigants, ideal requirements, its classification, some in detail about the commonly used irrigants such as saline, sodium hypochlorite, chelating agents, chlorexidin, factors affecting the efficiency of irrigant, irrigation guidelines as well as irrigation activation and agitation techniques. Coming to the introduction part, root canal therapy involves four important steps. First is to get a proper access into the pulp chamber as well as the canal. Second is to shape the canal by instrumentation or biomechanical preparation. Third is proper irrigation of the canal to remove the necrotic debris as well as bacteria out of the canal. And finally, to obturate a canal using an inert material to provide a three-dimensional seal. It has already been estimated that even though instrumentation has been done, there are remaining bacteria within the root canal. This is due to, you can see the picture of a canal system in this slide. The first picture shows there is not only the main canals, there are also so many branchings, accessory canals, communication as well as isthmus present in the root canal. So the anatomy is quite complex and bacteria tend to survive in these anatomical complexities. And it is almost impossible to remove these bacteria out of these complex structures only using instrumentation. And in this second picture is a cross section of a dentinate tubule. And you can see bacteria surviving or multiplying within the dentinate tubules. So due to high virulence of the bacteria, bacteria has the ability to even survive deep in the dentinate tubules. And these areas are mostly untouched during instrumentation procedure. So in order to obtain a proper prognosis for a root canal treated tube, it is imperative to remove all the remaining bacteria as well as the necrotic tissues from the canal system. But this is not actually completely possible using instrumentation techniques alone. We need to use some kind of antimicrobial agent which helps us to eliminate bacteria from these complex areas within the root canal system. Coming to the definition of irrigant, an endodontic irrigant is basically they are chemicals or reactants. They are used for disinfection of the root canal after pulpectomy and just before obturation procedures. Ideal requirements of the irrigants is that one, it should be antimicrobial. Second, it should have the mechanical ability to flush the debris out of the root canal. It should be non-toxic as well as biocompatible to the periradicular tissues. It should have the ability to dissolve the remaining necrotic tissue as well as the vital pulp tissue. And it should serve as a lubricant and facilitate instrumentation. And it should remove smear layer. Smear layer is an inorganic layer that mainly covers the dentinate tubules and it prevents the irrigant from reaching the bacteria within the dentinate tubules. And finally, it should have low surface tension. Lower the surface tension, better will be the contact angle between the irrigant as well as the bacterial surface and the internal surface and better will be its action. Even though we are stating the ideal requirements of the root canal irrigants, it can be finalized that there is not a single irrigant that obeys all the ideal properties of a root canal irrigant. So during our endodontic procedure, we use a mix or a multiple irrigants to obtain all the benefits during the procedure. Coming to the classification of root canal irrigants. Root canal irrigants can be classified as non-bactericidal, bactericidal, chelated solution, herbal agents as well as recent advances. Non-bactericidal irrigant solution, they do not have any antibacterial activity as the name suggests, include saline, local anesthesia, distilled water, etc. Bactericidal irrigants include sodium hypochlorite, hydrogen peroxide, iodine, as well as chlorexidine. And chelated solutions include EDTA, citric acid, MTA, tetraclean, etc. And herbal agents include trifella and green tea. And recent advances in irrig irrigation includes use of activated water, photoactivated disinfection, laser, as well as ozone. Coming to the most commonly used some of the irrigants, 
One is saline. Saline of 0.9 percentage is used for endodontic irrigant. It doesn't have any antimicrobial property, neither it has any tissue dissolving or chelation properties. The only property saline has had, it helps in mechanically flush away the debris out of the root canal. It is also known as a physiological solution. Coming to the next root canal irrigant, that is sodium hypochlorite, and it is the most commonly used and most effective root canal irrigant. It is basically a reducing agent. It was introduced by Henry Dakin during the World War II, and it's also known as Dakin solution. It is a straw colored fluid, and its activity is due to the amount of or the presence of free chlorine, which is bactericidal in nature. And another important property that keeps sodium hypochlorite apart from other irrigants is that it has a tissue dissolving properties. That is, it can cause complete dissolution of the pulp tissue within 20 minutes to two hours. Entire pulp tissue can be single-handedly dissolved by sodium hypochlorite solution. Common concentration of sodium hypochlorite used is 5.25%. The mechanism of action includes the production of hypochlorous acid as well as hypochlorous ion. And these, by the reactions such as saponification, amino acid neutralization, and chloramination, produces the desired effect. Even though sodium hypochlorite has so many advantages, it tends to have so many disadvantages also. The main disadvantage is that it is cytotoxic. And when we are using sodium hypochlorite along with the resin bond or adhesive obturation material, it can affect the bonding of the obturation material to the canal system. And also it doesn't have the ability to remove the inorganic component. It has an unpleasant taste and odor and it should be very careful when we are injecting or using sodium hypochlorite as an irrigant as it can result in sodium hypochlorite accident. Sodium hypochlorite accident is very common, especially in case whether we have a, where we have an open apex or we forcefully inject the hypochlorite solution into the periapical region. The symptoms include severe pain, edema, swelling, echemosis, and it can be managed by proper information to the patient, calming down the patient, giving cold as well as warm compressions along with analgesics and antibiotics. So even though hypochlorite has so many good properties, if it is not used properly, it will have so many drawbacks also. So for today, we are ending with sodium hypochlorite. Later, we'll take the rest of the things. The rest of the irrigants will be seen detailed in the next class. Thank you.